I reviewed over 30 audio products this year. Can you guess which one is my favorite? I think it's gonna surprise you, but here's a clue. It's something that's small, it's odd, and it's unique. And I told a lot of friends about it this year. It's also a product that I've used daily after my review, which is not something I normally do. Now, any of you who have watched my channel throughout the year are probably gonna guess that my favorite product was the Erd CD Transport, or maybe the Denifrips Aries 2 DAC. And as much as I love both of those products, they cost me over $2,000. And yes, I paid for both of those with my own money. And at that price level, I found that both those products met my expectations, meaning I got what I paid for and I was absolutely happy with each and they both made me fall back in love with my CD collection. But because of that price point and how it met my expectations, neither of those was my favorite piece of gear this year. Well, if it wasn't the CD transport and the DAC, then maybe it was a pair of speakers that is my favorite piece of gear this year. I did enjoy reviewing the Zoo Audio DWX speakers, but those were on loan to me from a friend and they are back at his house, so I don't get to use them on a daily basis like I mentioned at the beginning of this video. It could be my Vintage Klipsch Heresy speakers, which I found for a great price, in my opinion, earlier this year and did a review on as well. I still, I actually do use those speakers daily, but as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the item I fell in love with is small, and as we know, a set of speakers, especially Klipsch Heresies, are not small. So we gotta keep thinking about what this piece of gear that I fell in love with is. You know what? Maybe my favorite piece of gear wasn't released this year. Maybe it was actually a vintage piece of audio gear because I still love collecting vintage audio. In fact, I have always wanted a three-head cassette deck, and this year I invested in a Nakamichi BX300 deck that I bought broken on eBay and luckily was able to get up and running with just a little bit of maintenance. I have absolutely loved using that cassette deck this year, but let's be honest, a vintage cassette deck probably is not going to be my favorite piece of gear after reviewing over 30 items this year. I've I think I've got what I'm looking for around here somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, here it is. No more teasing. Let's jump right into it. My favorite piece of audio gear that I reviewed this year is the Shit Wrecker amplifier. I know, it surprised me as well. Now, the reason why I am choosing this little amplifier as my favorite product that I reviewed this year is simply because, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, to me, it's very odd and unique. And the reason to me why it's odd and unique is because it's so small. Now, we are used to seeing plenty of small class D amplifiers, right? That's just sort of where the market has gone. And out of nowhere, shit audio is like, you know what? We can make something small too, but, it's gonna be class AB, and it's only gonna be two watts per channel. Now, when I saw this was released, I immediately bought it because I just didn't actually believe that something this small could be a class AB amplifier with such low, uh, low wattage and actually sound good. And to be honest with you, I was absolutely surprised. I used this at least three days a week at my office. I listen to music there, you know, the entire time I'm in my office, I have music playing, and this has been a lifesaver. As much as I love my audio gear, my home setup has always been something that I've worked on for years, but my setup at work has always been rather lackluster, and this amplifier has changed all of that. Now, a lot of you were probably thinking it might have been a class D amplifier. And to be honest with you, I enjoy reviewing those, but I don't actually use them very much after I review them. And for me, class D has really gotten power hungry. Everyone's chasing more power, larger power supplies. Uh, how much can we, how much power can we output and, and what will it sound like and all these different chips. And again, this is where the record surprised me because it's class AB and it's only two watts per channel. They're like, shit didn't even give a shit about the power rating. 
they just made a great little desktop amplifier. Now, I actually use this in my home system with my Klipsch Heresy speakers, which have a high sensitivity rating of 90, 90 decibels or so, depending on what your determination of Klipsch ratings are. And I'll be honest with you, even in my small listening space, this was adequate power for those speakers. Now, I had to crank up the volume on my preamp pretty high to get it uh, you know, too loud to listen to, but I could actually get it to a volume that was pleasant to listen to. And at work, it's no problem in that real desktop near field listening for me to hear this, um, to hear how great this amplifier sounds. So this is my product of the year. I mean, I can literally, I can, I can, you know, I just put it in my back pocket, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> there you go. Also, a couple other things. You can use this as a monoblock for all the rage that the EMA A07 Max and the Fozzy ZA3s, for all the monoblock craze that's happening, shit was there first earlier this year. Now, my second favorite piece of gear would be right behind this, which is the Yolahorn amplifier. And that is actually at 10 watts per channel. And I do use that amplifier a lot still in my home system. And it pairs great with my uh, Klipsch Heresies and I don't have any volume issues with it. So the record comes in, um, you know, at top, just because of that low, crazy two watt per channel power rating. But the Yolahorn is right behind it. And this is what I've been telling friends all year. When I'm talking about Class D amplifiers, it's really just like, yeah, hey, you're gonna like this one, you're gonna like this one. They sound good for Class D. Um, if you need this much power, you go with this one, get this power supply, whatever. I can do that all day long. Here's an Amazon link. But with these amplifiers, I have just had a lot of fun when people come in my office and they go like, "What? where's the sound coming from? I'm like, this little two watt amplifier, you know? And they're blown away by that. Or the shit Yola horn amplifier at 10 watts per channel, doing this because it's sitting right over there. Um, that to me has still sounded great in my home system and have told people that as well. And what I'm telling folks is that if you have the right set of speakers with high sensitivity, you don't have to go crazy on power ratings. You don't need as much power as you think. It sort of reminds me of the vintage receiver uh, beast wars. You know what I mean? Where every company, Pioneer, Marantz, uh, Sansui, Everyone was trying to one up each other just on power. And these things have, uh, and those receivers turned out to be these massive units that did output a lot of power. But to be honest with you, you can get a vintage Macintosh 25 watt MC2505 amp and it sounds amazing. And the same with like a Harman Kardon HK430, which I reviewed this year. That can even sound great. So for me, I'm just really hung up on the record this year. I think it was a great product. It's something that I've told a lot of friends about, and here I am telling you guys about it all over again. Now, if you're interested in my full review on the record amplifier, you can, uh, I actually reviewed this earlier this year, right after I purchased it. And if you'd like to learn all about this amplifier and even the Yolahorn amplifier, you can do so by watching this video here.